Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Object Oriented Programming. In this episode we're going to look at polymorphism. So what is polymorphism? All it means is if we call the same class name, it'll do different things depending on the parameters passed in. So let's look at an example here. And the first bit of Python we're saying print 6 multiplied by 5, and in the second one we're saying print hello multiplied by 5. When you put, pass into the multiply function two numbers, it multiplies those numbers together, and 6 multiplied by 5 comes out to be 30. Whereas when we print hello multiplied by 5, because it knows one of the parameters is a string and the other is an integer, it prints out that string the same number of times as the integer in it. And because we haven't got a space in the word hello there, it just sticks them all together in a row. So the multiply, the star there, is actually a, a method. And the method takes two parameters. In the first case, the method is taking 6 and 5. And in the second case, the multiply method is taking hello and 5. And it's smart enough to know to, re to return an integer when it's two integers and to return a string type when it's a string and an integer. If the two um, parameters going in to the multiply was, let's say, A and B, and A and B were matrices, it would do a matrix multiplication where it would multiply row by column, row by column, row by column. So depending on what parameters coming into the multiply, it depends on how it acts. That's a simple example of polymorphism, or just being able to multiple changes or shapes, being able to react to the parameters coming in. So the multiply symbol knows that it has to do something different if it gets a different kind of input in. Let's look at a, a different example. So not necessarily more complicated, but possibly more relevant. If we want to create a method called play that would play any audio file, and we had a generic audio file type called audio file, the instruction to play might be something like a particular audio file's name dot play. Now I'm sure we know this, that different audio files have to be played by different um, players, or at least have different compression algorithms. So MP3s and WMAs and AUG files have different kind of compression algorithms, and WAV files have no compression at all. So if I had a play method to play an audio file, I'd have to, it would have to know what type of file this is, and then use the appropriate player and use the appropriate decompression algorithm to play it. So it's the same method name play, but for different file types, we should use different approaches to playing the file. Let's have a look. So what I'm thinking is if we create a, a generic class called audio file, and from that, it, at that class, there are instances inherited subclasses that inherit features from it, and we could have an MP3 file type a WAV file type, and an AUG file type, which are three relatively common audio file types. Each of those classes have their own play method in them. They all inherit the INIT file from audio file, and then they all have their own play, separate play files. And I've used a little diamond there to indicate they're inheriting features from the superclass audio files. So this is a little bit of more, more of UML. So what would our audio file class look like? Well, all it has in it is a single method. It's the INIT method. And it takes in the object and the file name. And it checks if the file name's extension is a known extension. And if the extension is a known one, then we're fine. But if it's not known, then we say it's an exception. And we raise an exception with the message invalid format or unknown file type or whatever you want. If that exception isn't raised, it'll go past the indif and continue on to the self.file name, gets file name. So whatever file name is passed in, that becomes the object under investigation. So just a, a little more detail on that. Um, in each subclass, we'll see how the extension gets set for each different type of file. But at the moment, all we need to know is it's just checking if it's a known extension. That is to say, is it a dot? WAV, a .mp3, an AUG, or some weird file type. And it raises an exception if it doesn't. We did exceptions before. 
But if it's not a problem, then we set the current object file name to be the file name passed in. Let's look at the subclasses. So, so MP3 file, what does that look like? Well, it sets the extension name to MP3. So that's how the superclass knows to check what the extension is. And it's play method. We're not going to actually show you how to play MP3s here. All we're doing is we're saying playing the particular file name as an MP3. And that's all that print code does. It just says playing whatever file name you pass in as MP3. What does uh, the web version look like? Well, hey, it's surprisingly the same code almost, except everywhere you see MP3, now it says WAV. So the class is WAV file, the extension is .wav, and now it says playing the file name as a WAV file. And then for an OG file, it's the same thing, playing an OG file as, as format OG. Now, how does this run? If I create a file, let's call it MP3, and it's an instance of the MP3 file class and the file name is myfile.mp3, and then I say mp3.play. It knows to go to the mp3 file class, and it says playing the file name as mp3, which is correct. If I do the same with the wav, if I, 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 all I need to do is say wav.play. Let's say file name.play, oasis.play. If, as long as you know what the extension is, it's not a WAV file, it'll play it as a WAV. Let's look at an error one now. If I have an OG file, my file.og, but I declare it as MP3 file, and then I try and run that, what it'll say is the extension on the file is MP3, but you're trying to play it. I thought it was an MP3, but the file name you've put in is an OG. So that causes the INIT to raise an exception and cause it to crash. Thanks very much, we'll see you on the next episode.